I think Cardi just came across my page on Instagram. It was a little bit after a whole lot of red drop, like literally a few days after. He had just DM me and he was just like, yo, I fuck with what you got going on, da 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 da. I want you to be in this show. And I was in Virginia at the time because I'm celebrating Christmas with my family. Yeah. I'm like, all right, bro, when's the show? He's like, it's tomorrow. It's like three in the morning. This like real yeah. vamp shit. Like he's three in the morning. Like, yo, I need you for the show. I'm like, all right, bro, bet. <laughs> going on guys you're watching kids take over right now we're actually in vancouver finally we haven't been shooting here uh lately but i'm with my guy mitch my oh boy how's it going thanks man? for having me hell yeah this is like it's funny because it's not my first time seeing you when i interviewed ken back in uh, la yeah this is like before x or uh, even project x dropped mm -hmm. uh you were like you like came in the middle of the interview yeah I oh yeah i went upstairs i didn't even know y'all was doing the interview that was funny what were you there for? Like, you were just kind of supporting Ken? Just... Yeah, supporting the gang, because that, like, was one of his first shows in L.A., Yeah. like, bigger shows. I actually, like, uh, put together one of his first shows ever in L.A. It was, like, in the basement of this church that my boy owned, and he was throwing parties down there. Damn. Yeah, it was hard. Man, I feel like from the moment I saw you at that show to now, probably so much changed for you. And I think that was just, like, a year span or something. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, now you're here. Like, what even brings you here? I know you're, like, on tour. And yeah, I'm on tour with Abel right now yeah. for the After Hours Till Dawn tour, their yeah. first stadium tour. First time I'm on tour with them. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. Man, I want to get into all of it because there's so much stuff that you're involved in. But, like, the first thing I just want to even ask is, like, about your upbringing because you haven't even done any, any video interview yet. Mm -mm. That's kind of cool. Maintain so. a mystery. Where are you from, though? Because you're not... I thought you were from L.A. Are you not from L.A.? No, I was born in um, San Diego, but raised in Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, like yeah. Northern Virginia, not like real Virginia, where like Pharrell and Clips and them are from. I lived in like a suburb area outside of D.C., so it was full of like politicians and like political families, mm. like very like government oriented. So there's not a lot of like outlets for art and like creation out there. Mm. Thank God for the Internet, because that was like the only thing that I could like tap into to get out of like that influence there because mm. there's like go to school you know go to college get a good job like corporate nine to five job yeah yeah just yeah. very by the book but then i would do like country shit and like go to like farms and ride dirt bikes and shoot guns yeah but then like i'm getting influenced by like 50 cent and, <laughs> yeah. it, and like my older homies are putting me on to like dip set I think that was kind of like my introduction to um like clothes and fashion was was through music Mm. But that was like the only escape that I knew was mm. like, I got to, I can just get dressed and that's about it. Yeah. But like the style at that time was like, it was very like oversized and baggy and my parents weren't rocking with it. Yeah. So I used to like ride my bike to school and pack the clothes I want to wear in my bag. Cause they'll take, they they'll take the clothes yeah, I had to change at school. Yeah. I was wearing like Echo, like big Echo jorts and like Air Force Ones yeah. and like, um, basketball jerseys and shit hell yeah. yeah well which basketball jerseys do you have and it was it real or was it fake it was probably fake honestly <laughs> it was like oh michael jordan one it's like chicago bulls one yeah yeah i feel like everyone at some point had like a fake iverson jersey or something yeah i had the real air forces though like the mids with the strap on it i had oh, yeah? like a ton of different colorways of that that's fire man i mean so how did you sort of sort of like find your your creative purpose because i think everyone knows that they might not know what you do, but they know that you do a lot of things, you know? Yeah. So, like, how did you find the things that you love doing and you're like, all right, I'm going to turn that into my career? I think, like, the nucleus has always been closed, mm. even since, like I said, when I was in elementary school. So, being around Ills, like, he had the funds to buy those clothes and I didn't. Mm. And I'm just on the internet, like, just, like, window shopping, just wishing. But then I'm sending him shit so he'll, like... Oh, I want to get that. I want to get this, you know, and then I can just hope he'll throw it to me later when he's <laughs> done with it. Yeah. So the nucleus is closed. If you could name like the main things you do right now, right? Like, what would you say those are? Styling. It kind of started with styling. And just from that, it's kind of like that kind of morphed into like creative development, whether yeah. it be like for artists, for projects or just like clothing brands, um, stores, keeping them going with what's going on mm -hmm. in culture and keeping mm -hmm. shit fresh. Yeah. You're like kind of in a sense like an A&R 
in a sense. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah. Um, not just musically, even if it's just like culturally, I guess. There's a vision already in place and I'll just put my two cents in. If they like it, they like it. If not, yeah. you know, keep working, keep it moving. That's interesting, man. I mean, you said that Lamar is the reason that you're around, Abel and whatnot. Um, I want to know the story of like, how do you, how do you become like a random kid and then connect with someone like Lamar? You know, like there's probably so many <laughs> kids watching that are like, yo, because I, bro, I've seen people like uh, that are great at networking, people that are horrible, people that are good at it and they get in the room and then they'll just like fumble the bag because they're trying too hard, right? So like, how did you go about networking, you know? Yeah, the thing about networking is like, just for me in general, everything that I've done and I'm still doing and that is still like being presented to me as time goes on, it's all been very organic. Mm -hmm. And I think that stems from my intentions being very pure. I think like you said, a lot of kids, they try hard, like they walk into a room with a motive of mm -hmm. like, I'm leaving here and I'm getting a follow back from this person. Or yeah. like, I'm leaving here. And even like for your sense, like I'm not saying you do this, but it's like maybe people in your lane would be like, I'm, I'm leaving here with the interview. Mm -hmm. When instead it's like, if you just go there and be yourself and be you and not even be on some shit about like, this is what I want, mm. that shit will probably organically happen because they'll be drawn to you as a person and they'll mm. be like, okay, I fuck with you rather than like, I fuck with your interviews. You know what right, I mean? It's right. like, oh, I fuck with him. What does he do? And then they research you later. Like, oh, he do interviews. Next time I see him, I'm gonna do an interview. Right. So I think like with Lamar especially, I never really had any ulterior motives and I mm. still haven't to this day with any of those guys or anybody that I'm with. It's yeah. just like, I'm just myself and we become good friends and then things kind of just happen organically. Lamar especially, um, I don't know if you know too much about what he got going on, but he runs and started this thing called House, House which is, is like, incredible. bro, yeah, incredible. That's like the only word for it is fucking <laughs> incredible. Yeah. But the thing a lot of people don't know is that, how, is that Lamar was running House in the streets before it was a thing. Mm. So like, for example, like, on their tours, they'll switch up the photographer almost every time. Okay. Just so a kid could get that on their resume. You know what I mean? Like, that's I just the type of people they are. I that you say that. I'm like, that is kind of true. Yeah. yeah. When most camps, like, they have one photographer, one videographer, and that's it. Yeah. With these guys, they're like, they know, like, just as I said earlier, like, you got to foster the youth to keep the shit going. Oh, yeah. You know, to stay fresh and just keep it moving. When I met him, it was very organically, it was just one of his mutual friends was staying at my house in LA because he had a project he was working on and he came by to say what's up to that person. It was your photographer homie, right? Mm -hmm. Ellie. Ellie, yeah. yes. Yeah, so Ellie was staying at my crib. It was like his first gig with Disney. Lamar came, pulled up like his first weekend. We met. He texted me and was like, yo, you're a stylist, right? And this is early. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. In the back of my head, I'm like, bro, nah, like, I, I want to be. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, we got this XO shit going on. Like, you want to style it? I'm like, yeah, for sure. And then, yeah. you know, it just kind of kept propelling after that. So what are like some specific things you did when they came to styling? Do you remember like a certain project that you, that you were like really proud of? Like I think like one of the cooler ones, it was uh, they did a Bape collab. Yeah. So I got to style that for, for their artists at the oh, time. It was hard. like, I had to show you. When was that again? I remember seeing, that wasn't like too long ago, was it? Probably 2018. 2018, yeah. okay. But that's awesome, man. I think, uh, you know, something else that people really know you by is, you know, your work with Cardi and the entire Opium label really. Like, you know, how did you exactly get in that crew? Because I know that you knew people like Joy mm -hmm. before and whatnot. So yes, how did you kind of, you know, first of all, how did you know them? And then how did you maneuver from there to actually be in Cardi's camp? Um, with Phoenix, I, I can't even remember when me and Phoenix first met. I think it was just like going outside, being in LA, just running around and doing creative shit. We had a lot of mutual friends already. Mm -hmm. I think Cardi just came across my page on Instagram. And then I think, um, I mean, he would probably see me with Phoenix here and there. And um, it was a little bit after a whole lot of Red Drop, like literally a few days after. He had just DM me and he was just like, yo, I fuck with what you got going on, da 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 da. Um, and he was like, I want you to be in this show. Mm -hmm that I'm doing, it's like, um, it was the Cyber World show. Oh yeah, the, the virtual one. Mm -hmm. And I was in Virginia at the time because I'm celebrating Christmas with my family. Yeah. I'm like, all right, bro, when's the show? He's like, it's tomorrow. It's like three in the morning, this like real yeah. vamp shit. Like he's three in the morning, like, yo, I need you for the show. I'm like, all right, bro, bet. So I didn't catch a flight out there, did the show. And um, yeah, it's been, become my brother since then, for real. He's another like very inspiring, like, the work ethic is just unmatched and 
I think what him and Opium and EXO really share is just like they're very like progressive artists mm -hmm. and you know like they're not afraid to like push that boundary and switch up what they got going on even if what they got going on is working for them mm. and I think that's something that and a lot of other people in the game aren't really comfortable doing mm -hmm. you know what I mean like yeah. they want to sit back and just like oh this is getting me paid this is getting plays cool I'm gonna stay right here in this lane mm -hmm. whereas these guys like they're always like you know, trying to push the envelope and set something new, set a new tone. 100%. Yeah. What's like the most, you know, because I'm, I'm, t I'm talking about like, you know, these, these things you're doing, like styling and whatnot, but what was like the most fun thing that, that was just like the most, um, you know, that you enjoyed the most doing for Cardi, you know? Because I would say the Sky video seemed fucking lit. Like, yeah, that was a blast. <laughs> yeah, that was mad fun. Like getting the trash at grocery store. That was probably the funnest part. Everything with him is fun though, because he just like, he just likes having fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or the, the vans at Rolling Loud when we mm -hmm. were smashing the vans? No, I wasn't there. That's Black Hane. That wasn't you? Yeah, that's Black Hane. Oh, bro. You gotta I look that him was up. You. He's hard. He's from overseas. No, that's hard, though. Um, so, if you came on after Whole Lot of Red, like, what were your like, thoughts on Cardi prior to that? Like, were you listening to Die Lit? To yeah, I've always been a fan of Cardi. Yeah. And, like, even um, prior to that, like, anything that was getting leaked on SoundCloud or anything, like, I'm tapping into that. I'm <laughs> downloading it on my phone so that. When it gets deleted, I still have it on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you, um, we were talking about like embracing the youth. Mm -hmm. And I know you said people like Ills did that, but I really feel like you're doing that as well since, you know, you're involved with people like Lonely and Ken. These guys are really young, man. Mm -hmm. Like, what's kind of your involvement with them? And just Yeah, it's just opium. So that's, that's the game. Those are my brothers, and they're fucking killing it. Mm -hmm. Both of their projects are going stupid. I'm really proud of those guys because they just they stay patient, wait until the right time to really pop shit off and that shit is popping off. That's kind of like what was bestowed on me is to keep that progression going and keep pushing that envelope through the youth. Mm -hmm. Even that's why I want to do the interview with you. I, mean, I know you're younger, like, you really, like, have a passion for the culture and not on some shit like, oh, I just want to get an interview with the littest person that I can, mm -hmm. which I noticed, so I respect that. I appreciate that, yeah. bro. Thanks so much. Of course. Hell yeah. I mean, you know, I think when it comes to embracing the youth, one thing I've noticed is a lot of people who are like slightly older will they'll listen to someone like a Ken or a Lonely and be like, oh, they'll label it as like, oh, this is just music if you want to have fun, you know, this is like, there's no substance to this. How do you kind of feel about things like that, you know, when, when people view young people and just put them in like a, a box kind of like that? That's some old head shit, like, yeah, yeah, that's just some dumbass old head shit. Yeah, <laughs> and it's surprising because it's like when that old head was probably coming up, whoever he fucked with was on a new sound at that time so it's like mm -hmm. like get off your high and mighty bro fuck like who are you anyway you know what i mean it's like yeah. you're not going to be around when ken or lonely or like you know kids that age are going to be up there and they're really like pulling that rope up for people to to keep climbing like where are they going to be yeah they probably have hearing aid by then <laughs> you know what yeah I mean? when you said they're not around i thought you meant they're gonna be like dead or something but yeah, it was kind of cold. <laughs> but I mean, bro, like, I know you have your own brand, which, which I want to get into after this, but how do you do so many things that aren't considered like your corporate normal job, but then still securely get paid, you know? Because that's the riskiest thing coming up is like, man, I could be a stylist, but I don't know for sure if I'm getting paid X amount of money per month. Of course. Yeah. There's times where I'm like walking into shit and I'm like, I might not even get paid for this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But when that happens, it's like you're going to get paid more later. And it might not even be from that. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's like what I take from this that I might not be getting paid for, I'm going to apply it to this opportunity later. Mm. But I have the experience now that I got, which was unpaid. It's almost like an intern. Yep. You know what I mean? But then you take it back later mm. and then you can run the bag up on somebody else that really wants something from you. You know, that's really true. Yeah, I've noticed that as well, because when even when doing the media shit is like you lose so much money in the first couple of years mm -hmm. just flying to this place flying to that place you're losing money you're literally yeah. losing money you have to get airbnbs flights all that but it's like in the future where you get the brand deals and like you know what i mean you, you get yeah, sponsorships exactly. and whatnot, so yeah that's pretty true but that's with anything any business even like with life is war like i'm making money on it but i'm putting all that money right back in to mm. keep that shit going like there's rarely a time where I'll take some money and be like, I'm gonna go get some, some Balenciaga with this, I get some Rick with this. It's like, yeah. 
do I want to buy more clothes for myself with that money or do I want to put that right back in so it can keep growing? Yeah. But Loki, I feel like you buying clothes is like an investment too. Yeah. <laughs> Loki, yeah. yeah it <laughs> so it's like you can you can do both. Yeah. But I'll write it off on my taxes. Facts, basically. For sure. I gotta commend you because what you do is really risky. So like, what would you say to the kid who wants to do what you're doing, but has that, you know, that fear of like, oh man, I don't know. But if my, you know, my parents are not gonna like me doing this because it's not making X amount of money right away. Yeah. Man, fuck your parents. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But for real, like, fuck their mentality. Like, I think they always understood like, okay, he's not gonna be on some normal shit, but mm -hmm. they still wanted me to have like security. I think that was like their yeah. biggest fear is like, we just want you to be secure. And we don't want you calling us for money. Yeah. You know what I mean? For a little while, you got to say fuck them because, you know, you're going to be sleeping on floors. Like, if you want to take that risk to really put yourself in a position, you're going to have to make those sacrifices, you know? Like, I've had friends that dropped out of school early on and they just thugged it out, sleeping on floors, sleeping on trains. Mm -hmm. Like, they have real, like, rough upbringings into the game. But then they're on now and they're successful now yeah. because they made those sacrifices. Even if you have to get a regular job just to support that vision that you want to do, there's nothing wrong with that either, you yeah. know, as long because that's your passion. Like as long as you put your love and your whole everything into your art, the money's going to follow. It yeah. does eventually. Yeah, absolutely. But bro, OK, let's hear about about your brand. Life is war. You've made a lot of different clothes. I've seen the sedated hats. Um, I, I saw a weekend wearing that um, the T-shirts. The uh, what's like really the idea behind your brand? You know, like every brand kind of has like a, a message they want to put out, right? Like what's, what's yours? It's something that I really just believe in, like just the name itself. And it, I think it to a lot of people has like a negative connotation right when you hear it. But I can see that, yeah. It's more of just like a nod to the fact that like we're going to go through struggles and battles and things our whole life and to embrace it. Um, any painful situation you're in, you just embrace that pain. You know, that's what your strength is going to come from. That's where your growth is going to come from. Because there's been a lot of shit that's like happened in my life that I couldn't imagine would have happened before it happened. Mm -hmm. um, like worst nightmares coming true. And I think facing that and going through it and not suppressing it and trying to ignore it and let it like eat me alive has really built who I am as a person today. Mm -hmm. So I think life is war is just like acknowledging that you know, life is always going to be a war and it's your choice if you want to fight the war, if you want to run from it, because mm. either way, it's going to be there. Yeah. So if you run from it, you could just keep getting weaker. You could just, you know, quit, but you can't quit because you're just going to have to keep running and keep running. So you might as well just fight the war, Yeah. you know, and keep growing, keep progressing. Man, that that's actually interesting. I think that um, I think all of us, like even myself, there's a lot of stuff that I like won't tell my audience. Right. Like you have to keep your personal life. And then there's like your business life, right? We've all gone through like disaster at one point. Like I feel mm. like everyone in this room yeah. has, you know? But I think the cool thing about disaster is like when you go through a disaster, that is like the turning point in your life where everything changes, right? Exactly. It's like a clean slate now. Yes. You know? Disaster is like, that's where you find, that's where you pick up all the pieces to put everything back together the way you want. And that's how, in my opinion, that's how you grow. So what was like, what was like the most, you don't have to get into specifics, but like what was like the most down moment of your life where you feel like you switched everything kind of around? Um, like a few years, like when my brother had passed away and then like, like one of my other best friends had passed away. My brother's, um, his dad had passed away. Mm. Um, my grandparents passed away back to back and my cousin passed away after that, like, Another one of my best friends passed away. It was just like a lot of loss in a short period of time. Mm. And I wasn't facing that pain and that pain just kept getting worse and worse. And um, it like got pretty dark with, with the drugs and stuff. Mm. And there was a point in time where I had went to get help for that. And I, I think it was like, probably like my second or third day there. And I kind of just like, looked at myself and just like looked at everything that was going on and I'm like, bro, is this what you want to be doing? Like, mm. you're too wavy for this. Like, this is not what we're supposed to do. Yeah. And I think in that moment where I kind of like finally kind of woke up and was like, okay, like I'm actually gonna like take in this help. Respect, bro. Yeah, and that's a lot really. Um, yeah, we've all had like different types of disaster, but like I said, it's, uh, it's low-key like, in a sense, it's good that that happened, you know? Mm -hmm. But 
bro, I fully believe in doing what you think is cool, you know, fuck what other people say, just do what you think is cool, right? And I think you should take baby steps in starting your own brand, you Yeah, know? for sure. But what's some of the most like helpful advice you could give to someone that's trying to start in clothing? Because I'm sure you've seen like, like do you believe in like mistakes when it comes to like starting your own brand or? Yeah, I mean, I don't really believe in like a mistake. Like you could, you could fuck up and like make too many of one size. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like that size doesn't sell. It's like, damn, yeah. I should have made less. Like, okay. like that's how I see it as a mistake. But in terms of like, if you're creating anything, like as long as you're not directly like copy and pasting shit yeah. that you've seen before, like even the Mickey T's, like Vivian Westwood used to do that, but I spun it my own way. Like I put meaning into it. I think the only mistake people can make is not putting meaning into their clothes or into mm -hmm. their art even. It's like, I'm just doing this because Oh, it's, it's working for him and that's cool. So let me just, you know, copy and paste this and do that. Because mm. the clothing game is getting really saturated. And, okay, like, for example, like, for me, I know for, like, for Phoenix and, like, a lot of my friends, like, when we put something out, like, we're going to we're gonna build a world around what we're putting out. Yeah. Just, like, what fucking kills me is, like, is, like, just T-shirt with a white background and then the mock-up on it. Like, you didn't even make the shirt. Yeah, It's yeah. just, like, a mocked-up shirt. Yeah. And you post in that and you're like, yeah. this is coming out this day. It's like, okay, bro, like cool graphic. What the, why do I care about this? Like, <laughs> yeah. why is it important? Yeah. Like, I always want to make sure that like whatever I'm putting out into the world, people know it's important to me. Right. Because it's so easy to see. Like when I see shit like that, I'm like, okay, cash grab next. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like nice. people send me shit all the time. Like, yo, fuck with my brand. Fuck with this. Do you like this? And it's like. Why do you like this? Yeah. Like, why did you make this? Right. Just because you thought it looked cool? Like, that's not enough for me, you right. know? I think the, one of the last few things I want to ask you. So we were kind of talking about, like, mistakes in clothing. And, you know, you touched on it. But do you think there's, like, rules for designing or styling clothes? And am I breaking any of them? No, there's no rules. Hey, bro, you could be honest, bro. Nah, you're good. You're comfortable. That, right. Like, that's when I, when I style somebody, the first thing that I ask after we put the outfit together and they're wearing it is, like, are you comfortable? Because mm -hmm. if you're not comfortable, you're not going to feel it. And mm -hmm. if you no, don't feel it, you're not going to feel yourself. You're not going to walk with confidence. You're not going to move the right way. You look stiff. Like, I think that's just the main thing for me. If In anything, too, is like, if you're not comfortable with it, nobody else looking at you is going to be comfortable with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Damn. All right. What do you think about um, every kid trying to dress like opium? I feel like that's, you know, you talked about, like, people following trends, right? I mean, that's a pretty big trend. Yeah, but like that's just, just what it is. Like opium, <laughs> opium is shit. opium. Yeah. But if they didn't do that, like it's not like we'd be like, oh, we gotta switch shit up because it's not hitting. You know what I yeah. mean? Like we're just gonna do it because that's what we do. that's what we on. Yeah. But I'm not mad at people trying to dress like anybody. It's more so like I want to see some. I want to see somebody that I'm like, yo, I want to dress like you. Mm. You know what I mean? Instead of like. Like, that shit doesn't impress anybody, like, you know, I'm making music like this, and this is kind of your wave, and I'm, I'm doing it on your wave because you'll probably fuck with it. It's like, how about you do your wave, and if I fuck with it, then we can move forward. Like, we keep the shit going, oh, yeah. you know, instead of just, like, treading water. I'm sure you've had some of that, at least, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's not all. It's no, not no, all, yeah. No, definitely, definitely. A That's lot, what's up. For sure. Well, hey, man, bro, I appreciate it, and I think... uh you know, one thing I really respect about you is that, you know, even yesterday when, or the other day when we were talking about doing this interview, you're like, yo, what's some stuff you're going to ask me that's really going to like help the youth, you know, like aside from just getting to know me. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was really cool. So. Cause yeah. it's like what I said, like you got to make, like, I have to put a reason behind them why I'm doing something. You know what I mean? Right. I don't want to do like a, I do this, I do that interview, yeah. which is cool for people to know, but at the same time, it's more so like, what can I what can we put together that kids are really going to pick up on and take with them in mm. their craft in, and just in their life? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bro, I, I respect that. And, yeah, I appreciate uh, it, bro. It was fun, man. Yeah. I, I want to interview more just like creatives, people that aren't just artists. I think there's mm -hmm. just so much more to talk about. In a yeah, sense. absolutely. Yeah. Bro, I appreciate you. This is fun, man. Appreciate you, bro. Mitch Thank Modes. you. KTO. Guys, thanks for watching that Mitch Modes interview. One of the more fun ones to do. Um, it's not an artist, but it's someone behind the artist that's also really important. But if you're seeing this right now, go comment something that you learned from this interview. Like that's that's what I wanna know. I'm gonna read through them and I'm gonna respond. Um, but yeah, 
Also, let me know, are there other people behind the artists that you want us to interview? Because I had a lot of fun doing that, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, yeah, go subscribe to the channel. The button should be there somewhere or here. Um, go uh, like this video, join our Discord in the description, follow us on Instagram at Kids Take Over, and I'm gonna see you guys uh, next video.